to remain silent. President Merrick Gertler, I sincerely hope you are listening. In the aftermath of October 7th, we have witnessed a scourge of anti-Semitism plague our city. Jewish places of worship, Jewish businesses, Jewish cafes, Jewish daycares, and even a Jewish hospital have been targeted by anti-Semitic mobs calling for violent uprising. In the last week alone, a Jewish girls' school here in Toronto was shot at, and another Jewish elementary school was shot at in Montreal. I've heard stories of Jewish artists and authors face cancellation because of their connection to Israel. I've heard stories of public Jewish events being denied security, denied buses, denied their rented venues. Jews are being canceled across this country simply for being Jewish. It's not just in the news. I've seen it with my own eyes. At Toronto City Hall, I witnessed a pro Hamas street preacher berate mourners at a vigil for the hostages. He even called an elderly lady, an elderly Jewish woman, derogatory names while the police stood by and did nothing. I am sick and tired of the anti-Canadian, anti-Semitic bigotry on our streets. Are you with me? I have been personally assaulted, punched in the back for holding an Israeli flag while walking near Blue and, Blue and Young. I have received death threats on the subway, twice. I have had to comfort my crying children late at night because they could not sleep on account of the frightening shouts of protesters calling for intifada on our street. I have lost too much sleep over the vile and shameful Jew hatred on the streets of Toronto. And here's what I want you to know. I'm not even Jewish. I'm a Christian Zionist. As a Christian Zionist who has faced this, how much more have the Jews of Toronto suffered and if they have gone long enough Phoning the place, the police are coming here. The police are coming right now. The RCMP and the police are coming. Shame, 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 shame. My family immigrated to Canada from South Africa to escape the oppression of apartheid. As a Namibian by descent, whose father, a Cape Colored, was oppressed by the apartheid regime, I was raised from childhood to appreciate Canadian values and Canadian freedom. As the son of a German mother with Jewish ancestry, I was raised with the important lesson of nie wieder, never again. Nie wieder, never again, never again, never Nor anti-Semitism. We must never again allow institutional racism against people of color and against Jews to gain a foothold in our institutions. The reason why my family immigrated to Canada was to escape apartheid, oppression and racism. Yet when I look around, I am shocked and dismayed at the cowardice of our political class that allows anti-Semitism to metastasize. And in some cases, our politicians even enable it. Never again is now. Say it with me. Never again is now. I need to confess, when it comes to U of T, I thought we knew better. I had a lot of U of T pride. I was proud of our reputation as a university. I was proud of our commitment to academic freedom and excellence. I was proud that whatever was going on at Harvard, at Columbia, at McMaster, and other universities was not happening here. But I was wrong. Since October 7th, I have witnessed hate on campus like I've never seen it before. I've witnessed students ripping down posters, posters of hostages. I've seen good faculty and staff who know better all of a sudden become silent. I've spoken to Jewish students who have lost friends and face ostracization. I've spoken to Jewish faculty members who find themselves in a toxic workplace environment with little recourse for help without jeopardizing their careers. 
Jewish and Zionist students are wondering what the consequence will be if they speak openly about their beliefs, especially around faculty who support the encampment. If the anti-Semitism on campus was directed at any other visible minority group, there would be zero toleration. If there was an anti-black movement on campus, the university would respond with the full force of the law. If black students were told to go back to Africa, instead of Jewish students being told to go back to Europe, the perpetrators guilty of such vile racism would be expelled and faculty would be terminated. The police would respond instantaneously if there was harassment of any minority group. But for some reason, hatred toward Jews at U of T gets a pass. Are you listening, Merrick Gertler? <laughs> University of Toronto students say no to anti-Semitism. U of T students say no to the glorification of Hamas, a terrorist organization. U of T students say no to calls for intifada and violent anarchy on our campus. U of T students say not in our name to the hate fest encampment guarded by masked insurgents, many of whom are not even students. U of T students say no to foreign interference stoking the flames of Jew hatred and division on campus. U of T students will not be idle bystanders while our, while our diverse and inclusive campus culture succumbs to systemic and institutional anti-Semitism. The truth is that Zionism belongs at U of T. Jewish and Israeli professors belong at U of T. Academic ties to Israeli universities belong at U of T. Visiting Israeli scholars belong at U of T. Israeli research, cutting edge, world leading innovation and technology belongs at U of T. The state of Israel is a beacon of hope for human rights in the Middle East. And that is why Israel is the best friend and ally Canadians could ever have. Democracy, minority rights, women's rights, LGBT rights, and free speech rights. rights are only found in Israel as a result of Zionist philosophy. <laughs> to quote the right honorable Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, in a country like Canada, it should be and it must be safe to declare oneself a Zionist, Jewish or not. Zionism is not a dirty word or something anyone should be targeted for agreeing with. It is the belief, at its simplest, that Jewish peoples, like all peoples, have a right to determine their own future. My friends, Jewish students, Zionist students, and their allies belong at U of T. We belong here, and we will not give in or surrender. That is why I am calling on Mary Gertler to take stronger action against the encampment. The encampment is not a peaceful protest. It is an unauthorized, unlawful, trespassing occupation. The encampment has become a no-go zone with ideological tests for entry. The minority of Jews who support it are used as tokens and human shields to cover up the extremism inside there, and everyone knows it. It's the elephant in the room. is posted with Hamas propaganda inciting violence. The encampment is designed, it is intentionally designed to be psychologically intimidating and secretive. There have been assaults, there has been an arrest. The violations of the student code of conduct are too numerous to track. When Moshi and I were assaulted here, the campus police told us they can't provide adequate protection because they are simply outnumbered. 
The regular Toronto Police Force Hate Crime Unit Division would respond differently, but instead of inviting them in, Barrett Gertler is negotiating with people who have no interest in dialogue. Shame. Shame. The decisive question is, does Merrick Gertler recognize the real possibility that by failing to take decisive action, his negotiation may actually represent an abuse of power? Where is the leadership we need? Now that the university's injunction request will only be heard beginning on June 19th, Graduating students can kiss goodbye their peaceful convocation. Graduating students can say goodbye to walking the lawn. Say goodbye to the U of T tradition because some students are too selfish to elevate their cause above everyone else's rights and freedoms. Mary Gertler, why are you favoring a small minority of belligerent students and off-campus agitators to the detriment of everyone else. How are you protecting us? Of students and non-students invades campus, sets up an encampment on its quadrangle, creates a nuisance that interferes with the business of education, and even bars other students and professors from entering, these protesters are interfering with the property and free speech rights of the university. This encampment is no longer engaging in free speech. It does not even deserve the name. By enabling the encampment and by allowing it to gain momentum and strength, the unintended consequence has been the deterioration of academic excellence. Mary Gertler, this has gone on for far too long. I call you to end this encampment by inviting the police to remove it, just like the president of the University of Alberta has the courage to do. Moreover, for every request that the University of Toronto grants to the encampment students, for every request that the University of Toronto grants to the encampment representation, Zionist students will follow suit with our own list of demands. First, Mary Gertler. I call on you, sorry, do you mind just backing up a bit so people can see? First, Mary Gertler, I call on you to adopt the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance definition of anti-Semitism, or IHRA. I call on you, Mary Gertler, to openly recognize that anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism. Gertler to hold all violators accountable, including clubs, individual students, and faculty. Yeah. By the way, there's a, the, one of the guys who assaulted me is back there, so I call the Toronto Police to have extra protection. Second, Mary Gertler, I call on you to disclose all funding received by the University of Qatar, universities in Qatar. In Turkey, universities in Iran, and Don't other such institutions provide material support to Canadian designated terrorist entities such as Hamas and the IRGC. We want freedom for all Iranians, freedom from all, for all Iranian students on campus. Iranian students deserve the freedom in Canada without the IRGC looking down their shoulder. As an aside, there was an IRGC table on May 4th, and even the police, when they drove us home, we heard them say, 
Those are suspected IRGC people. They didn't say that to us, they said that amongst themselves. Mary Gertler, are you okay with the IRGC operating at U of T? Really? Shame. Third, Mary Gertler, I call on you to sever academic ties with countries that harbor Hamas and other terrorist organizations. The University of Toronto must never again allow such a shameful, anti-Semitic, anti-Zionist, pseudo-intellectual encampment like this one to set the tone for debate and discourse at the University of Toronto. With that, I thank you for your patience and I call on the next speaker. Hamas, get off our campus! Get off our campus, Hamas! whatsoever. Zero. None. Can you, can you guys come here? They don't deserve any attention whatsoever. No attention whatsoever. Someone come here. Please. Those people are anti-democracy. Those people anti-Canada. Those people hate this country. So I'm asking myself this question, why are they even here? Why? What are they doing here? Those people don't believe in the freedom of speech. They don't believe in freedom of press. And those people are anti-Semites. Me and Joshua have experienced it a month ago. Me and Joshua were walking here, making circles around the encampment. I was carrying my Israeli flag. Proudly, loud and proud. Those people surrounded us. Those people assaulted us. Those people called names. They said that I have to go to Poland. They said that I'm a baby killer. They said 
that I don't belong here. Is this Canadian value? I don't think so. Someone who supports terrorist organizations like Hamas, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, Hezbollah, shouldn't speak on behalf of all UFT students. It's a shame. They're the minority. They're the minority. Look how many tents are in there. Hundreds of tents, there are 40 people, they're maximum. They're empty, completely empty. Those people are paid to do this thing. Those people are paid to do this. Someone who supports Iranian regime, Iranian terrorism, cannot speak on behalf of the students. Someone who supports the Russian terrorism, Russia supplies, uh, uh, Iran, sorry, Iran supplies uh, weapons to Russia to kill Ukrainians. So we have to look at Ukraine. We have to look at the genocide which is going on in Ukraine. Yeah, yeah. This is the real shame right now. People, people who support Yemen, who support those terrorists, they cannot be on campus. They cannot be even heard. Those are not Canadian values. Thank you so much, guys. Hello everyone, my name is Ari, I'm a master's student here at UFT, molecular genetics, and uh, my message today is uh, I think there are a lot of ways that the Jewish community can respond to what has unfolded across the past year, and what is unfolding here now on campus, and I'll tell you my initial reactions. On October 7th, Saturday morning, my sister and her husband living in Israel WhatsApp us telling us there's a, been a major terrorist attack, uh, but the details weren't quite known. Uh, once those details got out, the pictures, the videos, the celebrations in the Middle East, there were global celebrations, including right here in Toronto. My initial reaction was absolute hatred. I wanted instant revenge on those celebrating indiscriminate murder, medieval style massacre, mass rape. But over time, I realized that it would damage my soul, nefesh Yehudi, to be vengeful, hateful, and bitter. Bitterness produces moral decay, which produces violence. The, the violence that caused this war in October, and that hatred is right here on campus, with encampment agitators patrolling the streets, looking for Jews to punish for a conflict in a place where they've never even been close to. It is sad to see institutions and with high prestige, politicians and governments caving into the demands of those with that bitterness. While it was disappointing that many universities have not provided support for Jewish students, especially those that are directly affected by the war, it's primarily not the duty of a university to provide political or moral support. However, it's absolutely the duty of a university to ensure the safety of its students on campus. That currently is not being upheld. One of the organizers here was assaulted, two of them, on campus by agitators claiming to support peace. David Amelech, our king, he, he wrote, he noticed something over 3,000 years ago when he wrote his prayer book, Tahilim, the Psalms. David fought battle and battle in ancient Israeli soil and noticed there's a certain type of hatred, a certain type of malevolent bitterness towards our people. Tahilim Bet, he says, Lama. Why do the nations rage? Why, there, why were there no encampments for the Muslim Uyghur? No encampments for the Syrian Kurd? No encampments for the Iraqi Yazidi? All of which have actually been genocided. No encampments for the hostages. Did you know that in the 19th century, one third of Baghdad, Iraq was Jewish and their city market closed on Shabbat? Do you think that they, those people in the encampments know what happened to those Jews? Long before Israel was restored as a nation, David observed something in his time and even foresaw the unique bitterness towards the Jewish people. And I won't go into much more than saying that I do believe all human conflict is theological, meaning every conflict is a spiritual issue at the core of it. So my initial reaction of bitterness is not my personal state now. In realizing that this conflict is spiritual, I choose to forgive. I urge the Jewish community and student body here at U of T to be bold, to stand for truth, have courage, and also to love, to forgive, to forgive those that don't deserve forgiveness, 
to preserve love in the nefesh shehudi, not in some shallow pacifist way, but in understanding that it's better not for them, but for our own souls to carry ourselves in this way. Thank you. Good evening. I was asked to share a personal experience briefly. I'm a PhD student here at U of T, uh, working on my dissertation, which means I don't come to campus too often, except when I need to pick up books or drop them off. I hadn't been here in about a month, hadn't seen the encampment. Every time I come by, every time I come by, I always walk through King's College because I like to inspire my intellectual capacity with the beautiful architecture. Okay, so I came out to go for a walk like I normally do. I normally take photos of the beautiful buildings here like I did at the end of April, and lo and behold, there was this encampment here. I don't know too much about it, so I wandered on in. And I found out afterwards that they mistook me for someone else, and so they let me in. So I walked in and was looking around, and um, I started saying, wow, this is a pretty cool setup. You guys got like barbecue in it, all this Gatorade, and 50 liters of coffee, and, and, and bathrooms for you, like you got it all here. And I was just, you know, uh, making conversation and asking questions. So what's going on? Tell me about what's happening here. And um, I went to the, I saw the spiritual care hut inside. I thought, well, I don't actually need that right now. But I saw the coffee tea hut. So I went to the coffee and tea hut. And I said, hey, um, can I have a cup of coffee? And the, the nice lady welcomed me inside. And she got a large cup of coffee. And I was in there drinking it. This guy runs over to me and starts screaming at me and says, get out of here. You're not allowed in here. And I said, why not? I'm a PhD student. I just wandered on in. I'm drinking my coffee. I just finished it. I'd like some more. And he says, this isn't for U of T students. It's not open to the public. Um, she said, get out of the fence now. Get on the other side of the fence. Get out of here. And he runs towards the door and he says to the security guard, why'd you let him in here? She says, oh, I thought he was someone else. So apparently, I, I must look like someone else. Um, so I, I, I wasn't there to cause any conflict. I was there to get my books and drop them off. And I said, well, thanks for the coffee. It's too bad it had to end this way, but I was upset at the end of the day. I stood there and pondered to myself. I always come to King's College Circle, just like my dad did, and, and stood here, and all of a sudden I can't get through it. So they're not allowing me to walk on my own campus, and I pay the darn tuition, all right? And I can tell you right now, a lot of those people I know they don't go to school here because I know what squeegees look like. I've seen, I, I know what they are, right? I work in a homeless shelter, okay? I spent for years. Okay, there's a lot of different people in there who don't go to school here. I pay my tuition and I can't walk through there. So they asked me to share this story. I look forward to the day when I can walk through, walk freely through there. If they let me in now, I'll go in. They won't let me in. I can't walk through there. Wow, thank you so much to everyone for coming out here tonight. This is amazing. Big thank you to Joshua and to Moshe Zelli for putting this together. It's a very brave thing to do this, to show Jewish pride and allyship here at University of Toronto in 2024. <laughs> My name is Rabbi Jaffet. I've been the campus Jewish chaplain here at U of T for the past decade. I also completed my undergraduate degree here at the St. George campus. And I have to express my profound grief at the fact that this campus has gone to be a place where being openly Jewish and supporting Jewish indigenous rights to our homeland has become physically dangerous. I'm a little bit nervous right now, I'll be honest. I just got some news that I was told I'm not allowed to share. But I think I'm going to do it anyways. A few months ago, the university, the DEI department, was having a special event to celebrate the International Day to End Racial Discrimination. And at that event, they decided to focus on anti-Palestinian racism. Because that's what's affecting the students, they said. So I told them I'd be very happy to learn more about this. I'm so excited. I want to hear about anti-Palestinian racism. I don't really see it around. But I'd also like to include anti-Israel racism in this panel. Now, one would think that 
department that's dedicated to diversity, equity, and inclusion would be open to including anti-Israel discrimination. And yet the response I got publicly and over and over again was no. We will not be including that on our panel. I arranged a meeting with the VP of Equity and with a couple of other administrators from the university. And we talked about this. And I said, why can't we just include anti-Israel hatred? I said, my Jewish students here are experiencing it. They're experiencing violence on campus. They're experiencing tens of thousands of protesters around the corner calling for destruction of the Jewish state. They're experiencing shop windows being smashed and schools being shot all in the name of anti-Israel, let's face it, anti-Semitic persecution. But the university's answer was no, we're not going to include anti-Israel hate on the International Day to End Racial Discrimination. Me too, unless you're a Jew. That sums up very nicely. But I'll tell you, there's a next step here. The next step was, this was, when I released a press statement about anti-Semitism on campus, I included a number of things that had been going on here. I circulated this press release, and I mentioned this. The university administrators then lodged a complaint against me to Campus Chaplain Association. And I was told by the president of the Campus Chaplain Association I'm not allowed to talk about it, and they're going to investigate me. And today I was told that I'm a repeat offender and they're organizing to now try to suspend me from campus. I think we know that when people want to keep things hush hush and they want to operate in the darkness, no good can come out of it. So I'm going to spread some light to this. I'm going to share the light. I'm going to put this out open. We can call on my supporters here at the University of Toronto, I'm going to call on all fair-minded people to support having a rabbi on campus, to not suspend me from the Campus Chapel Association, and to allow us to freely criticize anti-Semitism that's going on here. Now, I was asked to talk here as a rabbi, so I want to talk a little bit about the Jewish nation. For the Jewish nation, the land of Israel isn't just a piece of real estate. It's the birthplace of our people and the focus of our 3,300-year history. Dig down into any corner of the land, you'll discover multi-thousand-year-old coins, pottery, parchment scrolls, and stele engraved in Hebrew, bearing witness to the indigeneity of the Jewish people. And yet somehow the world has become brainwashed into thinking that the Jews are quote-unquote settler colonialists in the land of Israel. How absurd. Let me make this clear. Indigenous people cannot colonize their native land. Telling the nation of Israel that they don't have the right to live in the land of Israel is telling us that we have no right to live anywhere. But I've got news for you, we're not going anywhere. Today, these brave students are taking a stand and they're saying enough is enough. Anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism, full stop. As a rabbi, I'd be remiss if I didn't tie this into this week's Parsha. So it happens to be a good one. This week's Torah Parsha, the Chukosai, the Jews around the world are reading about God's promise they made to us over 3,300 years ago. There will be times where we live in tranquility in our homeland, and there will be times where we will suffer in exile. Nonetheless, the Almighty promises us, quote, Even when they are in the land of their enemies, I will not cast them away, nor will I ever abhor them to destroy them and break my covenant with them. For I am the Lord their God. My dear Jewish students and our precious allies, I give you a blessing that the good folks in this university will soon show the moral courage to stand up for us against this wave of violence and hatred. May we all recognize and appreciate the special love that Hashem has for us. And may we all experience the final redemption from this exile speedily in our days. Amen. Our first faculty member, our first professor at the University of Toronto to publicly speak. Uh, actually, I may have misspoken. There was a, a rally a few weeks ago and there was a, a former arts and science dean. But uh, I want to introduce you to Dr. Matthew Light. Yeah. Uh, hello, and thanks to organizers for, for thanks to the organizers for bringing us all here to this important event. I work right past that building in the Canadiana Gallery, which is hidden by Gerstein Library. 
I have had an office there for 16 years, uh, serving this university. I am very committed to its interests and its flourishing. I'm going to speak now about what this encampment means for us as students, faculty, and staff at the University of Toronto, and not just as Jews or supporters of Israel. Yes, okay. So I think um, when I talk to people who are not particularly concerned with the issues that bring us here today, one of the points I make to him, to them, is that yes, a university is a place for disagreement. It's a place for strong disagreement, it's a place for principal disagreement, and it's a place for protest. There's no doubt about that. The problem is, this is not a protest. It's not a protest. It's certainly not a peaceful protest, but it really is, is a violent occupation. I think what hinges on the way that the university responds to this occupation is whether this is a place where we settle our disagreements in a civilized way, through argument and persuasion, or whether it is a place where policy can be changed through force, intimidation, and fear. by some of my colleagues who have referred to this as a peaceful protest. So let me give you an analogy that I think will make clear why it's not. If somebody holds a gun to your head when you're at the Instateller and says they want you to give them all of their money, and you do, that's not really a peaceful interaction. What happens here, right behind that fence, if you try and enter it against the, without the permission of the people who are now controlling it, they will ask you a series of questions, and I have tried this, so I know, I'm speaking from experience, you must give the answers that they want, all of which have to do with the conflict between Israel and the Palestinians. It should not matter what I think about that conflict. I should not have to answer those questions. I work here, I should be able to know what I want. Nobody should have to do that. Nobody should have to say anything about what their views are to go through this campus. They should not have to say they support Israel, they should not have to say they criticize Israel. They should not have to say Prime Minister Trudeau is the greatest Prime Minister ever. They should not have to say that he's a total idiot. Right? We should be able to go where we want to express our views without fear, and that is no longer possible. Any concession that is made to this occupation is a concession that is extracted under duress, in violation of the university's rules, in violation of the law, and we all know it, with the involving the intimidation and harassment of Jews and supporters of Israel on this campus. And I would like to know that not all those people are Jews, right? I am very grateful for the support of non-Jewish allies. <laughs> this university does not belong to any one person, any one group, any one political uh, affiliation. It is a place for all of us to come together as students and scholars and people who love and work at this university. It cannot be taken over like this, and I very much hope that our leadership will recognize that and will stand firm against the very unreasonable and hateful demands that people who are not the role of their lives. Thank you to everyone who's uh, joined us tonight. I, I hope that this is just the very beginning. Um, just on a personal note, when I was organizing this, a lot of people said, well, which which group are you with? Which establishments are you with? Who it represents you? Before we can help you, we need a list of credentials from other clearances. And I just wanted to say, uh, this was excess. This was a true grassroots movement. And the fact that you are here, you made it a success. Thank you so much. If you have connections to any Jewish groups on campus, or, or Christian groups, or Muslims against anti-Semitism, just ask them to be not afraid and join us next time. Thank you. Um, and we're going to we're going to finish. We're going to we're going to wrap up with the with the, the Israeli national anthem now. Um, it's 7:03, and we want to respect everyone's time. So let's.